uh, in the next few minutes, I will try to talk about the advanced cartilage restoration techniques. And uh, we talk about the advanced medicine to clarifying the terminology and also for the tissue engineering to speak a little for the histology and the natural history of cartilage lesion. And finally, uh, to go through the treatment options, the treatment options that we have in our hands. And finally, to uh, present the new perspectives in the field of uh, uh, the uh, cartilage treatment, uh, lesion treatment. So when we talk about advanced medicine, we talk about regenerative medicine, which is the replacement or regeneration of human cells tissues or organs to restore the normal function of the uh, uh, human body. And uh, we talk also about the cell therapy, uh, which is the administration of cells for the patient's benefit. And finally, we talk uh, under the title of advanced medicine about the tissue engineering, which is the development of biological substitutes for transplantation, as well as an effort to regenerate and reshape tissue in order to replace, repair, or maintain its function. So tissue engineering, as I said, is the development of biological substitutes for transplantation, as well as an effort to regenerate uh, the tissue, to replace and repair the function. And we can draw this kind of uh, a cycle where first we can isolate the cells uh, from the human body we culture the cells in the culture medium and multiple, uh, multiply them. And uh, finally, uh, the, after the multiplication of the cells, to seed them in a special scaffolds. And after that, to continue the cultivation on the scaffold. And finally, to get the constructs uh, with uh, the uh, cells and uh, to transplant this constructs, construct in the human body. To do the tissue engineering, we have to have uh, three basic elements. First of all, a scaffold. Secondly, the proper cells. And finally, some biological substances, some molecules, which will start and direct the procedure. And about the scaffolds, the scaffolds have uh, to simulate the extracellular matrix and to give a three-dimensional environment so the cells can adhere in this substrate and uh, also this uh, construct to differentiate, to direct exactly the uh, differentiation of the cells. And after the transplantation, uh, this scaffold uh, has to degrade, so we call it uh, bioabsorbable, and uh, to re be replaced by the extracellular substance of the grown cells. And Let's go to the cartilage tissue. It's a very unique tissue with a specific ultrastructural composition of each extracellular matrix. It's a solid tissue, but uh, uh, which we uh, withstand significant uh, forces uh, through the joint motion and to have for that way uh, significant elasticity. So one can call this kind of tissue a living mechanical material. And the regenerative potential of bone of marrow derived elements uh, was determined in the early 60s, long before the discovery of uh, mesenchymal stem cells with the observation of the uh, cartilage paradox. What is this paradox? So when we have a partial thickness lesion, so there is no way this uh, cartilage lesion to be healed. And when we have a bigger lesion, a full thickness lesion, where we have a direct contact with the subcaudal bone, so there is a potential for healing with fibrocartilage. So the subcaudal bone has some value in this uh, healing procedure for the cartilage. But even if we got this fibrocartilage and the cartilage tissue has uh, to withstand some repeated loading uh, and uh, during the everyday uh, move, movement of the joint. So this repeated loading can cause a cellular, a further cellular degeneration. Uh, and of course, the accumulation of the degraded enzymes and cytokines, and finally, uh, the disruption of collagen ultrastructure, the increased hydration and fissuring of the tissue. 
So we uh, saw this cascade of biomechanical and metabolic uh, changes, which is also seen in the early osteoarthritis. What we have in our hands, an effective management of cattle literature is extremely challenging. We all know about this. There are several injectable and surgical interventions uh, which have been proposed for focal cartilage lesions. The effectiveness of this in terms of preventing or delaying the development of osteoarthritis is questionable, but also hopeful. And in the armamentarium against the cartilage defects, the stem cell-based interventions have gradually taken a more prominent role as we can see in this chart from the 80s to the decade of 2010. First of all, the injectable options, the platelet concentrates, the cell-based injectables, the cytokines, the alpha-2 microglobulin uh, uh, are all substances that try to enhance the anabolic procedure of the diseased tissue to suppress the inflammatory reaction of the diseased tissue and also to control the immune reaction. That's why we are very proud to be part of the Orthobiologic Initiative from ESCA, our European Society on Sports Medicine in Arthro and Arthroscopic uh, Surgery, which finally this initiative uh, finalized a consensus about the use of PRPs and other injectable uh, options for cartilage lesions. And this consensus will be presented in the next uh, ESCA meeting in the uh, next uh, May, April, sorry. So let's go further for the surgical treatment of the chondral lesions. There are specific indications, first of all, to be a symptomatic lesion, to be an isolated chondral or osteochondral lesion, to be normal uh, in a normal or correctable alignment knee, or to be a uh, part in a normal or correctable uh, ligament stability of the knee, and of course, to have a functional meniscus tissue. And as for the age, we can uh, implement this kind of uh, surgical treatment uh, actually in all ages. Uh, so there is the question mark in the uh, upper limit. But there are specific contraindications. Uh, we cannot uh, use this surgical treatment option in the osteoarthritis, in the systematic inflammatory disorder, and of course in the extreme condition of collagen or vascular disorder in the extreme obese patient and the uh, patients uh, who uh, use uh, chronically uh, immunosuppressive medication. First of all, we have in our hands in the last 60 years the bone marrow simulation techniques, uh, which is an uh, uh, increasing repair enhancement, like I talked about that uh, earlier with the cartilage paradox, where we drill, abrase, or microfracture the subchondral bone, and uh, through this penetration, uh, blood and bone marrow elements uh, come to the uh, lesion site and formate a fibrin clot. The form fibrin clot provides the environment for fibrocartilage formation, but this fibrocartilage is without the ability to stand the applied mechanical loading for a uh, long time, uh, maybe after the five years, there is a destruction of this fibrocartilage. So that's why 30 years before we got in our hands the autologous chondrocyte implantation. Today we have uh, the fourth generation of this kind of procedure, but uh, we, we use the uh, mature chondrocytes from the human body through two operations, one to get the specimen and the other to uh, transplant or implant the uh, construct with the chondrocytes, the uh, multiplied chondrocytes, cultivated chondrocytes. But again, in this kind of uh, procedure, we got highland-like or highland-like or highland -like cartilage tissue, but there are some doubt how the cells uh, which uh, did differentiate it in the lab have the ability to re-differentiate again and regain the cartilage phenotype. That's why 20 years ago, or better, in the last 15 years, we used the uh, scaffolds without the chondrocytes in a one-stage procedure where we put a scaffold to protect the fibrin clot and possible to induce the chondrogenesis from the subchondral bone marrow MSCs as an artificial extracellular matrix. But again, we have 
very few of these kind of cells in this uh, focal lesion site. That's why we use the autologous bone marrow uh, mesenchyma stem cells for focal uh, cartilage lesion uh, after a culture proliferation, the culture expansion. And there are many clinical studies which record uh, the use of bone marrow MSCs after centrifusion, the bone marrow aspirate cells, the well-known BMAC products, alone or mixed with collagen, hyaluronic acid, and uh, fibro fibrous glue. So there are also positive results in studies comparing mesenchyma cells with autologous chondrocytes or by injecting bone marrow mesenchyma stem cells in Tunis where other interventions have been performed. Uh, for example, microfactures. Since their identification and the potential source of cell therapy for cartilage damage, adipose-derived MSCs have become a reliable source in uh, multiple models of cartilage regeneration. They have the ability to be uh, many and uh, we, it is very easy to uh, take them from the body and of course, an additional advantage is the findings that they have a dominant hydrogenic capacity. So in a number of uh, patients, it uh, was reported that after interticular injection of adipose-derived MSCs, the pain was reduced and the function of the knee was improved through the suppression of the synovial activation. Uh, and uh, this kind of cells can ameliorate the damage of the ligaments and the menisci. They can also inhibit the development of uh, cartilage destruction. And finally, may they have, uh, they, they can uh, give place for formation of new cartilage and bone. That's why we tried the last 10 uh, years with, uh, in our clinic, uh, the project of the adipose-derived MSCs. Uh, through the rationale that uh, we have, uh, our first uh, thoughts was, uh, were that uh, autologous chondrocyte transplantation needs two operations. The cost is high, and of course, uh, we read about the uh, doubts about the de-differentiation of this count of cells. On the other hand, the MSCs have been shown to play an important role in cartilage healing. Their number is uh, uh, very easy to increase, to be increased. And of, uh, of course, uh, we use adipose derived and not bone marrow because bone marrow MSCs have difficulty to get them uh, without anesthesia from the patient. And finally, uh, we uh, finally get a phase three clinical study, uh, which uh, got uh, a couple of uh, uh, publications. So, uh, the purpose of these studies was to investigate the midterm outcomes of the single-stage cell-based procedure uh, in patients with knee focal symptomatic cartilage defects using matrix-induced culture expanded autologous adipose-derived MSCs. It was hypothesized that the increased number of autologous MSCs after culture expansion is a safe and efficient cartilage repair procedure which improves over time the chondrogenesis. And in these two tables, we can see our inclusion and exclusion criteria and the demographics of our patients, mostly young people uh, from both uh, uh, sexes and uh, with an average BMI and uh, in all location of the knee and also with some concomitant lesions and uh, we did concomitant procedures. So we take a subcutaneous piece of tissue we isolate the, in the lab the MSCs from this uh, tissue and got finally, after a month, uh, uh, almost a month, 10 to 20 millions of cells with strict characterization of these cells to be adipose-derived MSCs. And finally, we use a scaffold to inject this, uh, the cells in the scaffold and put the construct, the scaffold and the cells in the focal lesion through in the operating room. And we follow clinically these patients and we, our results uh, through the IKDC and course scales uh, improved to be durable, good results after three years. And of course, we did MRI uh, in our patients and finally uh, we found that there are development of tissue resembling the healthy cartilage after the first, second and the third postoperative year. 
So the, uh, the most important finding of our study is that the implantation of this culture expanding uh, mesenchymal stem cells is a safe, efficient, and single state cell based procedure with significant mid term improvement of clinical, functional, and radiological outcomes. Of course, there are limitations in our studies, but all in all of these kind of studies, because we have short term and mid term monitoring of the results. The sums are uh, regularly small. There is a the heterogeneity, uh, heterogeneity of lesions about the size, the location, and the etiology. And of course, we did a clinical evaluation and MRI evaluation, but we caught few biopsies and uh, the result from these biopsies, as you can see in these photos from uh, histology, is very, very uh, hopeful. So, uh, and of course, the level of uh, evidence of these studies is uh, uh, three and four. But the um, science uh, continue to try to find new uh, pathways. That's why uh, Arlo Kaplan uh, used a new uh, term from the uh, abbreviation MSCs and call this kind of cells medicinal signaling cells. Uh, trying to say that these cells can guide the local cells to provide the chondrogenesis. And may this kind of uh, new terminology can uh, <coughs> explain uh, the fourth generation of autologous chondrocyte implantation, where we got the cartilage particle from the boundaries of the lesion, and through an enzymatic digestion, we can isolate it, uh, mature chondrocytes and put again in the lesion, and of course, to guide these cells through the use of MSCs, and in some projects, through allogeneic MSCs to do a new and uh, highland uh, cartilage in the site of the lesion. And of course, there are new perspectives in the area. So uh, the cell or the cell products or biosubstances from the cells, can we inject them in uh, a, an effort to uh, treat the osteoarthritis now, but not also osteoarthritis, also bone defects, delayed porosity of um, a fracture, osteonecrosis, discopathy, muscle injuries or injuries and degeneration of ligaments, tendons and menisci. And to use allogeneic MSCs and of course to use regular cells from the human body a body and to do these cells to be multipotent, multi, pluripotent or multipotent stem cells, the well-known IP cells. And using the technology of bioprinting to use this kind of cells, the MSCs or the IP cells and scaffolds, and finally to construct a part of the uh, damaged tissue and put this construct through the bioprinting procedure to the human body. So, in conclusion, there is a widespread use of autologous mesenchymal stem cells for transplantation, but this widespread use depends on uh, the best results versus simpler techniques. That is a matter of uh, research to be found out. And uh, we have also to know which methods of administration is the best. And the MSCs can be isolated at first, differentiated in the laboratory, and then implanted. Is it safe also? And we need studies uh, to clarify the number of cells, uh, the, implement, uh, the, implement, the implantation methods, and of course, uh, to find out the interaction between chondrocytes and mesenchymal stem cells. And to do this through multicenter studies for using these uh, very unique cells. But we can say now for sure that cell therapy using MSCs is a safe procedure with promising early results in focal cartilage lesion. Thank you very much. And uh, this is my references. And again, thank you. And uh, to, uh, uh, let's say, announce again our biannual Congress in Thessaloniki, Greece in the next June. Thank you.